Slytaz GNU Linux is a distribution which is, get ready for this, 35 megabytes in size. That's it. 35 megs. Not gigs, obviously. Megs. What is this good for? Because some people question why lightweight Linux distros even exist, since everyone has so much hard drive space. Well, let's just say for the moment that you have a laptop and it has at least one gigabyte of RAM, <coughs> excuse me, but the hard drive is shot. It is dead. You can't do a thing with it. Well, this Linux distribution is designed to run completely in RAM and put everything you want to store on it to a USB stick. So, one second, let me just set my language config and my keyboard config which is, oops, come on mouse, there we go, US. So the deal is that this thing will, uh, doesn't need a hard drive, not at all. You can either run it completely from USB, like other lightweight distros, or you can run it completely off CD, and then it r uh, installs itself in RAM, and by the way, it's done, it's running. That's from scratch, this is the entire environment right here. And uh, this is cool because it loads very quickly. It has mm, more or less the apps you would need to get along with it. And th the best part is that it's just it's tiny. I have no idea how well this works with wireless cards or not. I'm running this virtually, so if you want to test it out, um, most of you I think have Broadcom wireless cards, either Broadcom or Intel, and most of I think that's what Dell and HP use the most. So what we've got in here, the first thing to note is that the uh, is the Slytaz panel and the uh, Midori web browser here, and of course you know there's a terminal. The of course, what Linux wouldn't be Linux without a terminal, right? So when you check out the panel, the first thing it asks for is uh, username and password. This is a live session, so it says default username and password is root for both. And from here, you can choose to install or upgrade. You can, cr right here, create a live USB key. So this is where you would actually create your USB stick from. Or build an ISO, convert an ISO, or create a live CD-ROM. You can do your kernel modules and detect your PCI and USB stuff here. Check your boot logs, set users. Now right here is the wireless stuff under networks, so that's where it is. If you want to check it out, and uh, the, you know, it's package administration and processes and all that other happy crap. The app set that it comes with is decidedly minimal. Remember, 35 meg distro, so we don't have much here, but it's enough to uh, get along with it. Like I said, Midori works pretty good. It does not have Flash, unfortunately, but I'm sure you can install that easily. Uh, so you've got your IRC client, you've got your Midori. Uh, Retalk is actually a text-based browser like Lynx. Then you've got your SSH box secure shell, you've got SCP box secure... I'm not even sure what that's for. It's probably FTP. Anyway, TAS web browser, transmission BitTorrent, Twitter microblogging, you know, nothing you really haven't seen before. In the multimedia department, you've got your mixer, your audio player, or ripper, an editor, and Gemendo music. I don't even know what that is, I'm assuming that's a player. In the office department, you've got a PDF viewer, a document viewer, a couple links to wikis, and the uh, SQL engine. Then your preferences are here. System tools. Again, nothing to write home about, really. And your uh, utilities here, where you can burn disks. you got your text editor, your nano editor. Uh, the terminal is again here, scientific calculator, blah, blah, blah. That is more or less it. The thing that makes this awesome is the fact it is only a 35 meg distro. That's what makes it awesome. So if I was to just you know launch the browser, go to a website, Midori. Uh, let's see what is this. Midori is a fork of Chromium, if I'm not mistaken. So essentially, if you know Chrome, you know. Uh, Midori. Let me go check the preferences section, see if it's any similar. Well, not really. 
as, as far as the look between Google Chrome and this, but it's supposed to be... Oh, I'm sorry, I got that completely wrong. No, 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 no. WebKit-based. That's what I meant to say, not Chromium. WebKit. <laughs> sorry, I had a brain lapse there for a second. The point is, is that it will view any website you want to go to. So if I go PC Mac, the only thing that doesn't look right is the fonts, which I'm sure you can install Microsoft fonts if you wanted to. Why would you? I don't know, but some people like the Microsoft fonts inside a Linux environment, but this looks plenty readable to me. So I'm sure it's okay. So again, I have to make the point that this is a 35 megabyte distro. Just search for Slytaz uh, using Google Bing, startpage.com, where you're a search engine of choice, and you'll find it. Just S L I T A Z. Fairly easy uh, to go through. I would suggest running it, well, you have to actually run it in live mode first, because you're probably going to install this on a laptop, and I would check the wireless first. If you can get that wireless to work, you're golden. Then you can just install your stuff willy nilly and have Linux goodness in a tiny package. I like Slytas, I think it's awesome.